everybody. My name is John Miller. Um, hook em. I am a, uh, a Longhorn, and I am an official Longhorn that has a graduate degree from this university from 1994. So I'm a little bit an, an older Longhorn, but still a good one. Um, I am the VP of our Consumer and Retail Solutions Group, CARS for short. Um, I've had a pretty uh, crazy career. So I've worked for little places like Dell Computer. You may have heard of them before. Um, Cisco, Advanced Micro Devices, uh, General Motors, and now I am at AT&T. Um, within my career, I've done everything from development to architecture, systems design, strategy, as well as, as management, executive director. I was a chief engineer at a, a, a big car company, which was kind of fun. Um, so I've done a little bit of everything. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, uh, what we're doing at AT&T is by far the most amazing things that I've done so far in my career. Okay, so uh, I was told to start off by giving a little bit of, of 101 on AT&T. Um, so since this was also part of my speech time, I thought I would go a little quick. So let's start off with, you know who this guy is? Alexander Graham Bell! So Alexander Graham Bell was the guy that started AT&T, or started the company that became AT&T. And so we did products like the telephone. But beyond that, in 1876, we started with this. But over the years, 90 years later, we launched the first satellite communication system for commercial use. So we started doing more than just telephones. We did telephone data. Now we're doing mobility and fiber. We believe that mobility and fiber are like, I don't know, um, like hmm, peas and carrots? No, nah, that doesn't sound very good. Like um, milk and cookies. They go better together than separate. And so one of the things that we've really focused on is getting very specific on our, 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 our objective and our key results, which is delivering the best mobility and broadband together. Where are we going in the future? One of the reasons why you're all here is to find out, well, what are we going to do, right, as you graduate? Um, so we think that AI is definitely the future. We're going to have people that talk about that today. Um, I can say that we've been dabbling in AI for a little bit. Uh, in fact, in 1955, we were one of the companies that coined the phrase artificial intelligence with Dartmouth, Harvard, and IBM. And since then, we've done a huge amount of work. So everything from you know, how we, uh, we actually look at where our network should be, uh, um, should be captured to what are we doing in the future in terms of where we're laying fiber. So all of that is, is where it's going. But the key for us is, is that we're looking at AI in terms of how do we make our employee and our customer experiences better. OK. Now, we talked a little bit about the AT&T 101. Well, how are we going to get there? And so this is one of the most important slides that I have because it tells about the three things that we're doing. One is, why are we doing what we do? What is our purpose? And it's connecting people to greater possibilities with expertise, simplicity, and inspiration. When you look at the employees of AT&T, you really see that we embody those three characteristics. Then what do we do? We want to be the best connectivity provider through 5G and fiber. It's something that differentiates us from our competition. Then finally, how are we going to do it? And this is the most important thing. And no matter where you go to work, make sure they have a great culture. But we believe that we serve the customer first, period. It all starts and ends with our customers. We believe that we should act boldly. And you've seen that in the market. We want to move faster, and we truly want to win as one. At AT&T, there is no I in team, and we win together. And that's really how we're going to be successful. OK, so let's talk about you know, AI. It's the true game changer. It's one of those things that we're doing that like every company says, oh, we're going to go do it. You know, see all of these crazy things about 85% 
of interactions for customers will be interacted with somehow with, with AI. That's true. But I think that what's going to happen is, is that there's going to be some pretty big differentiators. How do we put humans in the middle? How do we make sure that we're using AI correctly? Um, I love the fact that um, uh, there's a company called Yum Brands. Um, does anybody know Yum Brands? They have little tiny restaurants like Taco Bell. Um, so I was really excited. Um, they use some of the same technologies that we use, uh, something called Google Dialogue Flow. Um, I found out that, that Taco Bells are starting to do artificial intelligence for all of their ordering as you come up to the uh, drive-through. So I told my 12-year-old daughters, it's time to go to Taco Bell, right? <laughs> Who needs an excuse, but you know, we did. Um, my two daughters love bean and cheese burritos. You know, they take after their old man. So we went to Taco Bell, and I was like so excited to show them AI in action, something that's getting rolled out nationally. So I, I pull up to the window, and I'm like, you know, one of my daughters likes bean and cheese burritos with onions, the other ones without. So I, I, I'm like, hey, I'll take six bean and cheese burritos, no onions, and then five bean and cheese burritos with onions. And it goes, 11 bean and cheese burritos. And I'm like, what? No, no, not 11 bean and cheese burritos, five with, six without. And it was like, 56 bean and cheese burritos coming right up. And that was like, no, not 56, I want five, five and six. And it goes, 56 more burritos. And so we, like, I look at my kids and they're like, AI, yeah, that's, that's really gonna take over the world. <laughs> we go up to the, uh, the front and the, uh, there's a human there that made it all better. She actually was like, yeah, that happens all the time. You know, we're still working on the technology. It's okay, I heard you the first, second, and third time. We've got five bean and cheese burritos with onions and six without. Um, but it was a really important thing because it taught us that you know, AI is gonna be great and AI is gonna really be the future. But AI alone is probably not gonna solve as many business problems as AI with a human counterpart, right? And that's a really important differentiator and something that we at AT&T are really focused on. Now, the other thing we're focused on is meeting customers where they want to be met. And our customers are amazing. We love our customers. Um, but our customers' expectations are pretty uh, high and lofty. I will say that most customers, and think about yourself, if you ever have an interaction with a company, you probably expect them to know about you and know about those interactions. And no matter who in that company you talk to, they should probably know about the interactions and the, the issues that you've had. None of us want to repeat ourselves. The other thing that you probably expect is an Amazon or Apple type experience, right? We want to have something that's easy, that's intuitive, that people know what we're doing and we're talking about. That's just human nature. Well, one of the challenges that we have at AT&T we get a million calls a day in our contact centers. We have hundreds of thousands of people that come into our retail stores every single day. So how do we make sure that we hit their expectations? How do we make sure that we do the right thing and we, we meet them where they want to be met? Well, one thing that we're doing is we're, we're taking CRM and we're scaling it. We're scaling it bigger than most any other company. In fact, we are one of the biggest customers of Salesforce because we are doing something that not very many companies are doing, is we're scaling it to our consumers. And we're taking that and we're doing things like what you see at the top, which is anytime we have a customer interaction, we have AI scan all the different data. And there's petabytes of data that we collect on our customers. And we look at that and say, here's the most relevant things that you should know to help serve that customer better. We also created our own large language model, and it's called Ask AT&T. And we use it through this thing called the AT&T Assistant in our retail and our centers to be able to use our large language model to tie our people, our processes, and all the information together so that we have real great experiences for our customers. Beyond that, beyond just knowing our customers, 
The other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we serve them better. We're doing a couple of things here at, at AT&T that are pretty amazing. The first thing is, is that we are really starting to do something called relationship selling. You know, making sure that we understand our customers and their needs before we start trying to sell them anything. It's a novel concept, right? But think about how many companies you've gone to that they just try to sell you what's on the truck. They don't know anything about you. Just sell you the most expensive thing possible. Is that a good customer experience? Is that what's going to keep you as a customer for life? No. So we want to know the customer to help sell them and service them better. But beyond that, we want to do what we're calling proactive service. And that's being able to take all those petabytes of data, looking at all the phone calls, all the data that you're using, and being able to say, hey, let's, let's make sure that we make our service even better. Let's make sure that we have a, a, like uptime that's industry, industry you know, um, best in class. Let's make sure that we have everything that that customer needs so, because they rely on us. And so those are some of the other things that we're doing, tying that data together and then giving better service to our customers. Now, when we start doing that, we see three big benefits there. Um, the first one is, is that we'll have better data analytics. So we'll be able to start answering questions, provide better services to our customers. But that's like the baseline of what the expectation that we have for our, our AI and our CRM. What we really want to start doing is we want to get to a place where our AI will start assisting and assisting our customers and assisting, uh, assisting our employees. Because we believe that we need to take technology out of the way of, of our employees. If you think about it, we want to start making sure that our employees can have those conversations with our customers to provide amazing service. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to start doing task automation. And again, not like Taco Bell where it's like, hey, let's, let's throw this out there and then you know, have to come up to the, uh, to the cashier. We want to make sure that we make this bulletproof. And so we'll have humans that are looking at it, making sure we're doing that, but they're, they're still looking at those tasks and firing off those tasks. You know, by doing that, we can drive more efficiencies, and then we can have those people, those humans, start focusing on building relationships, understanding our customers, understanding their products, and serving them better. And those are the things that really are impactful for what we want to go do. And a couple of examples to say, hey, this is not me just blowing smoke. This is something that's real today. We have Ask at and which I talked about before, which is our large language model. We have automated lead warming, which is the first place that we go that we can start saying, hey, let's start having better conversations with our customers, but let's have those conversations tied to a salesperson. Let's, lead, let's warm those leads, but let's have them sent by our employees. And then the final one, and this is a really big one, is our Ask AT&T Guarantee. We kind of made a splash recently at AT&T because we said we are going to make sure that we have the best network and the best performance, and we guarantee it. And when we screw up, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And so, you know, as you see that, we are the only company in our segment that is doing this guarantee for both our fiber products and our wireless products. The only way we could do that is through data within our CDO, within the AI, the automation that we're doing, um, to be able to deliver that guarantee. And so those are three things that we're doing just in, in this last year that have delivered high value and have been really doing the technology that we've just talked about.